prepare to race onto the field. Everything, everything is riding on this football game. So there's a special intensity, a special urgency. Here come the volunteers. Wherever you listen throughout the world, it's football time in Tennessee. What's up, Facebook? What's up, YouTube? Hey, what's up, Twitter? Hey, it's your boy, Billy Ratliff, man, here with the Volunteer Rose Show, man. Hey, and we got a special guest here today with the Volunteer Rose Show, man. I'm excited to get this football talk going, man, with the SEC, man. Hey, hey, we're going to welcome my boy, Mythic Do Guys, man, from LSU, down in the bayou, where your boy originally from, the boot. Louisiana, let's show out today. What's going on, my man? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, my Louisiana brother. Doing great, man. Ready for some football. <laughs> hey, it's right around the corner, man. Less than 90 days. And, of course, you know me, man. I've been, been waiting on football for the since it ended, since the BCS championship. Well, the playoffs. I still call it the BCS because that's what they created to try to find a championship team, man. So, what's up, man? What's going on with your boys down at LSU, man? What you think about your boy, Coach Ogeron, man? I think Ozer, I got the guys ready to roll, man. Um, we got a loaded team. This is the the best team he's had since he took over as the head coach. Um, pretty much stacked everywhere with good young talent coming in. Well, experience time. Um, be ready to roll, man. Looking forward to the season. Well, I mean, I tell you this here, man. You know, I think Coach O is a good coach, man. He's been he did a good job when he was at Ole Miss. Of course, he did a good job with the USC. I'm still surprised USC didn't didn't keep him as a head coach after he did a great job and took these guys to the to the um to the you know to the bowl game and everything, and they did a good job and won the game and everything. And then he they let him go to the SEC. And I know they still shooting themselves in the foot right now. So what do you think, man? You think Coach O is the long-term solution for LSU, man? You know, um, honestly, at first, man, like me and a lot of the LSU faithful, you know, we wasn't, even though we knew he bought a great energy, we wasn't completely thrilled at first with the hire because, you know, you had guys like, we really wanted Jimbo Fish and there's guys like Tom Herman rumored to take over the job, but Man, since he's come in, yo, he's he's been paying attention to detail. He's recruiting. Like, this year was the first time in a long time that we got nearly every big-time recruit in Louisiana to stay home. Um, Ishmael Silver was the only one that got away. But um, he's hiring good coaches. You know, he's talking about the offensive line, the defensive line. He knows what we need to do. And I do believe he's a long-term solution. And uh, he's a Louisiana guy, so... He knows what this community and this, this university and this state is all about. Um, and I think he's a long-term solution. You know, I, I feel the same way, man. You know, you know, when you got a guy like that, that that comes back home, you know, and they feel appreciated, they're going to give their all for their university. You know I mean, I had a coach just like that and with Coach Former. And um, Coach Argeron, I, I feel the same way, man. The, you know, the kids are, are buying into what he's feeding them. And as you said, you know, if you get those recruits in state, you know, that's, that's huge. You know, you get the top ten guys. Uh, I mean, even if it's the top three, I mean, even if it's the bottom t ten, it doesn't matter. If they come from the state. They're going to play great for that school, man. And, and, and Coach O, he did a good job of recruiting, man. He's still doing what I always said, man. He's making sure those kids – or playing to their potential. He's getting everything out of them. He got a lot of guys that are coaching them to make them doing the right things. And and it's working right now. You know, he and as you can see, he got the what, what is what are the top ten out of the state right now, out of the twelve kids. And, and and you need that. And that's what's missing with Tennessee right now. You know, of course I, I I want to talk about my boys, but today is all you, my man. So hey, check this out, man. What you think? The LSU defense gonna be like this year, man. After losing guys like your boy Greedy, your boy um Dewan White, Devin White, man, what you think? How you think they're gonna do with the defense this year, man? Um, I think they're gonna do well, man. Um 
We got a lot of talent. Yes, uh, Devin White was a top five draft pick. I mean, a great LSU Tiger, a great leader. And Greedy Williams, you know, though he fell in the second round, is a first round talent, you know. But um, we got guys like Jacob Phillips, man, who's been in the program. He's been doing his thing. He's the next big time linebacker that's ready to step in. And you also have Patrick Queen, who played a little bit for us last year when Jacob Phillips was injured and when um, Devin White was suspended the first half against Alabama. And as far as the secondary, man, we got the all-everything, all-American safety, Grant Delpit back there, you know, along with guys like Christian Fulton and Ja'Cory Stevens, you know, Kerry Vincent in the slot in. Watch this true freshman we have, man, Derek Stingley Jr. Um, this guy is physical, he's talented, he's rangy. You know, he may have a little growing pains early because he's a freshman, but, I mean, I feel like he's the next big-time cornerback, you know, ready to go into the league from L- from BBU. And um, on the defensive line, man, Clavion Chason, who we lost our best pass rusher in the Miami game um, in the first game of the season last year, he's coming back along with guys like Rashawn Lawrence coming back, you know, um, Michael Diveny, you know. Um, and we also got, you know, some a nice little defensive lineman named Sayaka Ika, I might be pronouncing his name wrong, the two freshmen from Utah. Okay. He dominated in the spring game, man. So, um, and not to mention, most importantly, you know, I feel like we got the best defensive coordinator in all of college football and Dave Miranda calling the shots on that side of the ball. So I think we're going to be fine. You know, I you know, and that's where it starts at on defense, man. Up front, you got to have those D linemen, man. If you don't have those guys, that front seven is where it's at. If they're not able to get pressure or get in that backfield or stop the run in the SEC, it's a long season, guys. I mean, and we're talking about injuries. We're talking about guys that can get to the quarterback, get in the backfield, and, and make things happen. Cause havoc is what I call it. You know what I'm saying? When you play in the ditch, it's a long season. If you can't get out the mm-hmm. ditch and make plays, and I see Coach Osborne, he's recruiting the right type of kids and getting in. And I, and I noticed that you know, they're developing these kids. You know, when you got a kid, like you said, the freshman that's coming in, he did a great job this spring. You know, you got guys like that that's getting in the backfield, Stopping the run and running to the ball. That's the that's the forgotten thing that people don't understand when it comes to defensive linemen. If you can't run to the ball like like when I was playing at Tennessee, Coach Chavis always said, We gotta have eleven guys running to the ball. If you're not getting to the ball, it's not gonna work. I don't care who you are. And I see that with LSU, man. These guys, they're gonna get Alabama for get a run for their money this year. You know, it's as a couple of teams I see that going to be contributing this year to making Alabama work for it this year. And, of course, now everybody was always talking about that offense, man. The quarterback, you know, he always played great, man. <laughs> and, and, and you know it's always been this way at LSU when it came to the quarterback position, man. Let's talk about the offense, man. How you think they're going to get on top of their game, man, to get to the next level, man, to get over the hump. When it comes to the QB, the O line, the running back, receivers, there's so much that you guys have on that side of the ball to make some changes this year. What do you think you guys need to do this year, man? Well, you're right. Um, as much as we're proud to see we DBU over the last however many years, we've been nine quarterback you. But um, I like Joe Burrow, man, who I like to call Jambalaya Joe. You know, um, he showed a lot of grit and a lot of toughness last season, man. Most notably in the um the bowl game against UCF when he threw the pick and the guy pretty much almost knocked his head clean off and he came back and threw four touchdowns and coming into this season you know um we've added a guy named Joe Brady who is going to be the passing game coordinator and he's also working with our wide receivers in the spring game man we ran a lot of shots doing a lot of up tempo stuff that you know us LSU fans are not used to seeing down here. But um, the wide receiver core is extremely deep, man. I mean, you got a guy like Justin Jefferson who was absolutely great last year, and you also got other returning receivers like Stephon Sullivan, you know, D. Anderson, you know, Terrence Marshall Jr., Jamar Chase. And then the backfield, um, we got two heritage freshmen coming in, and John Emery Jr. and Terion Davis. But in the spring game, man, Chris Curry showed that He's ready to handle some carries, man. 
And um, the offensive line, uh, I love the interior part of our O-line, you know, especially with this true freshman, Cardell Thomas, coming in. The tackles are a little bit of a question, but I do love the fact that they have experience. So you would think they'll be a little better this year, but we've added some freshman offensive tackles to provide them. But coming back with an experienced quarterback with a more suitable offense, you know, he looks like he knows where to go with the ball. He has weapons around him to hand it to and to throw it to. I feel like this is going to be the best LSU offense we've seen in a while, probably since, you know, the Mettenberger Jarvis Landry. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey I, I, I see that too, man. You guys are loaded this year, man. I mean, you know, you guys are going to compete for the West, man. I mean, and, and – of course, me, I love it. I mean, you guys beat Alabama. Hey, you did a favor for me and my balls, man. That's something that we want. It's time for those guys to get <laughs> off their throne, man. You know, hey, so what's up, man? Which, the schedule, of course, you know, it's always tough, man, in the SEC. Who, man, who do you think you guys mm-hmm. going to have a challenge with this year? And, and and how you think the season, what's your prediction, man? What do you think about you guys this year for the season, man? Um, of course, you know, but the big, big game to start the season after we open with Georgia Southern is we go out to Arlington, Texas and take on the Texas Longhorns. And that game is humongous for so many reasons, not only for college football, playoff positioning, hopefully, but recruiting. You know, a lot of our big time recruits come from the state of Texas. So if we could go there and win that game in that state, you know, it'll help a lot with recruiting. But, um, you know, they got a great quarterback in Ellinger, and they got a really, really talented receiver in Colin Johnson. But I think we go over there and win a really tight ball game. And the other games that we obviously, you know, you got the shoot on with Alabama and Tuscaloosa. Um, that's right. That's a tough one, man. They, those guys are loaded, man. I mean, they returned, you know, they lost um, Quinny Williams and a couple of other guys, but, you know, they returned in a bunch of first-round draft pick talent, along with the quarterback, the best quarterback they probably, you know, ever had, you know, along with that receiving core. Um, that's a tough one, man. Um, we may fall short in that one, but I definitely give us a chance. But the other games, man, we got Florida at home, which finally seemed like we played over there in the swamp. For the last six years, it feels like. Um, you get Arvin at home, who, you know, they got a heralded freshman quarterback coming in, but in a really good defensive line. But we, we usually beat them at home, man. I think we never lost them at home since like 99 or something like that. And another huge game is Texas AM comes to Dead Valley. After that seven overtime crazy, did we win, did we not win game? Um, obviously, Jimbo Fisher is coming in with a loaded offense. Defensively, they struggled a bit, but, you know, he has a big-time recruiting class coming in with a lot of young freshmen. But um, going through the schedule, you know, I think we should take care of Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, and, of course, the non-conference game. Not to sound too much like a homer, man. I honestly think this team could go 11 and one I honestly think this team could go 11 and 1 and, you know, possibly earn a spot in the college football playoff this season with the team that we have this year. Hey, hey, it's doable, man. You know, and, and just listening to you talking about that schedule, oh my God, man. That's, that's, that's brutal, man. That's brutal, man. Yeah. Just, just, you know, it's brutal, man. I just remember when I played, the East was always loaded, you know, the West, you know, it was just like, you know, it didn't matter on that side. And now it all, it, it swung over. Now it's the West, all the West teams. There's so many West teams right now. I mean, when I say so many, there's three or four teams in the West that can compete any day and win all the time right now. The East, they're, 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 they're on building blocks. You know, Texas mm-hmm. and if it's, it's going to be a tough team this year. Um, like my boy uh, Bobby Catfish said, man, that's his sleeper team this year out of the West. And I can see it, mm-hmm. you know, when you have a coach like like um, Jim Fish, I mean, it's, 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 it's tough when you got kids that – buy into systems the way he producing and and I can see them being tough for you guys man but I think LSU would probably come out on that game you know it, I think it's going to be a close like a three point field goal type of game because both of those teams kind of 
they're gonna they're gonna fight, man. I mean, of course, you know with <laughs> Alabama, like you said, man, it's 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 been a long time where you can just say Alabama had a consistent quarterback. Yeah. You know, normally they're known for defense and running backs. You know, never been thought about as a quarterback school now, but now you know since Jalen came there which people forgot about Jalen <laughs> and Tua yeah. came through and, and showed out that game and now he became the man. But I still say that Oklahoma is going to be something to work with this year. I mean, I don't want to go off topic with the SEC, but mm-hmm. I still think you guys have a chance for the West, man. I think it's going to be great, man. You know, this is going to be wonderful to see with the SEC this year, especially with LSU, man. And you guys are loaded, man. I wish I wish I could say my boys was like that right now, but we're still about two recruiting classes away. We're going to show out again eventually, man. You know, it's it's, it's coming, man. Hey, but y'all, y'all started it, man. That, that team, man, I remember that team, man. Um, Y'all the first BCS champs, man. I mean, great season by y'all, man. Especially the way y'all took down Florida, because Florida was the big bad bully back then. And um, the way y'all went out there, took them down, man, and won the national championship the best season, man. That's pretty inspiring, man, for the rest of these SEC teams in the West, like you say. So, um, hopefully we can pull through against Alabama finally, man. <laughs> Hey, I think it's going to come back, man. Hey, one more thing, man. I was just thinking about this, man. Bobby was telling me this, man. I think we have something more than Louisiana in common, man. He told me that you're, you're an Eagles fan, man. Oh, yes. Hey, fly, Eagles, fly. Hey, hey, that's my, fly. That, that's my squad, too, man. Ever since, oh, um, okay. hey, yeah, awesome. see, ever since my boy Darwin Walker went out there, man. You know, he was, yeah. he was, he was one of those tackles that, that the Eagles stole when he – um. When they traded for him from uh, from the Cardinals, and right. that's that's to me that's when the Eagles became the Eagles, and they took off from then. And I was stuck with it then. I was like, okay, man, I'm an Eagle fan because my best friend from college played ball with him, man. I was like, man, the Eagles, and he told me that you was an Eagles fan, man. I was okay. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna like this guy after all, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got man. another volunteer on the D line now too, man, with Derek Barnett, man. He covered that big time Tom Brady fumble, man. I'm looking forward to seeing what he could do this season coming off that edge. Hey, you hey, we loaded, man. I told everybody when 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 they got Derek, man, I said this is the sleeper of the draft, man. You don't oh, play in yeah. the, it's hard to play in the SEC playing 70, 80 snaps a game and be consistent. That's tough. Mm-hmm. And if you can do that, right. the NFL become easy once you become developed and understand how to play that position. So they and got the they got this. Yes, man, yes, over there. That's, yes. That's that's pretty doggone impressive. Man. Hey man, hey. Once again, man, I want to thank you for coming on the show with us today, man. You you produce a lot of insight that I didn't know. Now, I know you guys are loaded, man, which I knew that. I'm just playing with you. I knew you was loaded. So, hey, thank you for coming on the show, Mr. Do guys. Man, I mean, well, Stephanie, we're going to have you again, man. You know, Seth, if you want me to come on and talk about some things, man, I'm here for you. Reach out. Thank you for coming on to the show, my man. All right. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it. Go Tigers. All right, my man. All right, Facebook, YouTube. Hey, you know what to do, man. Hey, go out there. Like like us up on Facebook. Subscribe right there on YouTube, Twitter. Hey, love us, man. We're going to have fun this year, man. Hey, we out, guys. I love everybody. Go Vols.